Welcome to Bible Tract Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracts Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracts, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracts Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracts and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world, and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracts will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. Welcome to the broadcast, my friend. Thank you so much for joining us this, the day before Christmas. That is, if you're listening to the broadcast on its normally scheduled time, this is the day before Christmas. What a delightful time. It's a great time of year to be a believer in Jesus Christ, to believe that the person that was born as the babe in the manger was the eternal God come to earth in flesh to die on the cross for our sins, to be buried, to rise again in full proof of the fact that he can give to us what he promised. That gift is everlasting life. Now, friend, my Bible is open right now to Philippians chapter two. Can you stop and get your Bible out and join me there? Philippians chapter two, if you have been saved for very long, you probably have already second guessed where I'm going, but please just don't steal my thunder yet. Philippians 2, get your Bible, get a piece of paper on which you can jot down four words beginning with the letter R. Also, I've got a gospel tract in my hand. As my announcer has already said, this radio broadcast is the radio arm of the Ministry of Bible Tracts Incorporated, and that word tracts refers to an evangelism tool, a gospel tract, which is simply a short written presentation of God's plan of salvation. I want to highlight our hallmark track here and encourage you to get tracks from us. But let me lead into our Bible study time this way. On this Monday before Christmas, let me take to uh, take us to a lesser used part of the Christmas story. And the passage here in Philippians combines both the pre-existence of Christ along with his incarnation. Now, let me make sure that everybody is on the same page with that word incarnation. I hope it's a well-known and well-understood Bible word for you. But for those that it may not be so, let me explain. By the word incarnation, I simply mean that the eternal creator, everywhere present God came to earth and encased himself in human flesh. We mean that the divine person was fully present in the physical person named Jesus. This means that Jesus was fully human with all the standard limitations of a body, but he was also fully God. This is why we who love the Bible are so tenacious about believing in the virgin birth. It is not Mary that was born sinless. It was her baby Jesus that was born sinless. And Jesus possessed all the completeness of humanity, but in his human nature, there was not a sinful human nature. And let's talk about why in the world he did this. Get your Bible, get a piece of paper, join me, Philippians, please, in chapter 2. Before I start reading there, I have in my hand that gospel track. This is our hallmark track. This is the track that really started this whole ministry. It's entitled The New Birth. The New Birth. Now, friend, You've heard the term. You've probably seen it at the end of a football stadium during a football game. Somebody holds up a sign and says, you must be born again, and so on. Has John chapter 3 on it. That's where Jesus talks about this new birth, a heavenly birth. This gospel track, the new birth, talks about what the new birth is not. It lays out very clearly that the new birth is not religiosity. It's not morality. It's not reformation. It means to have a new life from God. It's very clear, very precise. You need this gospel track. If you want to know how to explain what the Bible says about what it means to be saved from sin, you need this track, but then hand it out to somebody. That is the gem of a gospel track. You can give it away without you having to really verbalize the gospel, but 
If you're going to verbalize the gospel, then leave the person that you've talked to with a gospel track. It'll solidify as they read it later on what you have said to them. At the end of the program, my announcer will give you three ways by which you can give to us your name and your mailing address. Do so. We'll send you a free sample packet containing one each of all of our tracks. You can go to our website, which is Bible Tracks, Inc., dot org and just give us your information there and we'll send you that free sample packet philippians chapter 2 beginning at verse 5 here's what the bible says let this mind or attitude be in you which was also in christ jesus who being in the form of god thought it not robbery to be equal with god but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men and being found in fashion as a man he humbled himself and became obedient unto death even the death of the cross wherefore because of this god also have highly exalted him. I stop reading right there. Now, there is a fancy theology term for these verses. This set of verses are known as the kenosis passage. Do you, have you heard that word before? Let me spell it. It's K-E-N-O-S-I-S. I'm going to spell it again. K-E-N-O-S-I-S. That word kenosis refers to what the second person of the triune God did when he took on flesh and dwelt among us. It simply means that the eternal God, the second person of the Trinity, surrendered his, listen now, surrendered his voluntary use of some of his divine qualities. It does not mean he became less God. It does not mean that the human person, Jesus, was a superhuman. It just means that Christ, the Son of God, submitted himself to function under the authority of his Father. Christ operated through the enabling power of the Spirit of God. But why? Why? Let me give you four words today, beginning with the letter R, like in the word righteous. Here we go. Number one, the word is relinquish. Relinquish. The first part of verse 7 says, Jesus made himself of no reputation. Now, if somebody with supernatural powers were to step on onto the earth's scene, it would not take long for it to be known. But Jesus came, and except for those unique events surrounding the time of his birth, he did not make a big supernatural splash on the world. He actually made no reputation for himself. He had relinquished his individual authority to use his powers that could have made pardon my terminology here, could have made a splash. He set apart and did not use them until his father said, it's time to reveal yourself. And that happened with his first miracle at the wedding of Cana. That's our word number one is the word relinquish. Our word number two is the word restricted. Verse seven goes on to say, he took on him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. Now, the eternal son restricted himself to be a man. He functioned as a man, and he did so under the enablement of the Holy Spirit. But friend, that's good news for us because that is how you and I who know Christ can now also function under the enablement of the Spirit. When the Father, God the Father, gave him permission, Jesus did miraculous things, but he did so being fully human. Now, did God the Son stop being, oh, let's say, everywhere present at once? Well, no, because John chapter 3 says that he was in heaven at the same time that he was inhabiting his body on earth, and he, Jesus, actually said that there. But Jesus did restrict his ministry on earth to where his body physically was. Our word number one, relinquish. Our word number two, restricted. Our word number three is rulership. Rulership. Verse eight says this, he, Jesus, humbled himself and became obedient unto death. Now, friend, for the purpose of redeeming lost sinners, God the Son became a man. In so doing, he also let the Father be his ruler, his authority, just like a man and a wife in a home. They're both equal, but in the setting up of the economy of the home, 
God says the husband is the head and the wife is under him. Well, Jesus put himself under the Father. God the Son put himself under the Father. The Father had authority over the Son, and the Son therefore prays to the Father, asking the Father's will for his earthly work. Jesus taught his disciples to be servants if they ever desired to have any semblance of greatness. Well, Jesus did not merely teach servanthood. He modeled it. He came and he served. He came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give his life a ransom. Mark chapter 10 says three words so far, relinquish, restricted, rulership, Our word number four is the word relegated, relegated. Verse eight goes on to say, he became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Listen to those words, even the death of the cross. Now, a very literal way to translate the end of verse eight is to say this, he became obedient even unto cross death even cross death. Now that translation puts the emphasis where the Bible puts it. Jesus relegated himself to endure the awful agony of cross death. You and I call it by this one word, crucifixion. In the gospel of John chapter 17, there we read Jesus's prayer to his father uh, the very night that he was betrayed and arrested. In John 17, Jesus yearns for the glory that he once had with the Father. Jesus said these words in John chapter 17 and verse 5. I'm reading now. Now, O Father, glorify thou me with thine own self and with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. Jesus' heart and mind were set again to share in the eternal glory, but first, He had to pray these words, not my will, but thine be done. In these two verses here from John 17, we see all four of my R words played out. Jesus relinquished his glory to have no reputation. Jesus restricted himself to the fashion of being a man And as did a point unto men once to die, so he restricted himself to experience death. Jesus then surrendered to the Father's rulership. And then Jesus says in John 17, I have manifested thy, thy Father's name. Again, Jesus says, they, speaking of the disciples, they have known that all things whatsoever thou hast given me are of thee. Finally, Jesus relegated himself to the will of the Father and the eternal plan of redemption. Jesus must die, but it must be by the cruelest form known to man. He must die on a cross. At the incarnation, or I could say at the filling up of a man with God, at that event, God emptied himself, the kenosis. Only in eternity, when we can behold his glory and splendor, will we begin to understand the love and lowliness of Christ in coming to be our Savior. In the midst of our gift giving this Christmas, why not give a gift to Jesus of you and I being an actual servant of somebody, somebody who cannot do anything in return for us? At that moment, we'll be like Jesus. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Tract Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309 828 6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracks, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois 61702. Again, our phone number is 309 828 6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.